Well, hello there! Um, so I have been seeing a lot of videos and stuff floating around about Poke Market, and I really wanted to try it out, and so I did, and I have a lot of thoughts about it. So this is mostly just gonna be like a haul slash review of everything that I think about Poke Market, and yeah, let's just get into it. So first thing I'm gonna review, oh, actually, you know what I should do first? I should explain what Poke Market is. So it is uh, an online website that's literally just for buying photo cards. All of the photo cards are shipped from Korea to wherever you are. You buy the photo cards on the website and then it goes onto your digital collection. And then at any point you can collect the cards and you can bundle up all of your cards in your digital collection and have them shipped out to you for a maximum of 20 cards per package. Uh, it's a flat rate of whatever shipping would be to your country, so like it doesn't matter if you're shipping one card or 20 cards, it is the same price. But you kind of understand, it's mm, very similar in function to like a lot of proxy services, um, but they have like their own warehouse that they do everything anyway. Anyway, um, so let's just talk about the packaging. So first it comes in a box with a bubble mailer. And then inside that bubble mailer is this little thing. Um, I've already opened everything, just because I wanted to double check that like I wasn't be I wasn't gonna like flash any uh, like addresses or anything on camera. But then we open it up. It comes in this little box with a little thank you card, and then all of the photo cards. Let's put this off to the side for now. Just going to show you the photo cards I got while I continue on with everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, it was a very easy website to use. Um, like, really intuitive. Everything just kind of made sense. Um, the search was really useful. It's all in English. So, yeah. Pretty easy to use. 20 cards right there. All right, the search is a little slow is like honestly the really only big complaint I have about the interface. Um, and the other really big thing is like you can't right click and open something in a new tab added for um, like a mobile phone. Like you can use it on like a desktop, but like it just makes, makes way more sense to like use it on your phone. Um, and there's no, no like save option where it's like, I don't want to buy this now, but I wouldn't mind buying it later. And there's no like wish list option of like a way to like keep track of like any photo cards that you might want that just haven't been put into stock yet. But the selection is pretty good. As you can see, to no one's surprise, I bought mostly 17 cards. Um, so we have like merch cards in here and like japan tour cards and i think this is a dvd card um we have a ruby card and a spider card um and we even have like the fourth fourth generation membership card in here so they do have a very wide supply of photo cards not only like album cards but like other kinds of cards honestly the only type of card that like i could not find uh was you was U.S. retail exclusives, which isn't surprising since they are based out of Korea. Um, but yeah, anything else other than that I could pretty reliably find unless it was just like an insanely rare merch card or something. They were constantly adding new cards. Like I would refresh the page like an hour later and then there was new cards added on there. The only thing is that like there are groups that they have on there but they don't actually have any cards for them for example one s and p1 harmony didn't have any cards on there and their kepler selection was okay but i noticed specifically he had like literally no more than like four cards at a time and they're also like kind of higher priced than i would expect for her which leads me into pricing um all of poke market's pricing varies wildly from card to card. Um, they do a lot of member pricing. It means the more popular the member, the more expensive the card is going to be, which as someone who mostly collects Vernon and Sunquan, I made out like a bandit. As someone who also collects uh, Hoshi, it gets, it gets a little insane. Some of these cards were literally only 50 cents, but that was before all the extra fees. I'll, 
I'll put a pin in the fees. I will talk about all the extra fees later. Cards go as low as 50 cents each, and I but I did see cards going for as much as $400. If there is a card that is known to be expensive, it's going to be very expensive on that website and can be like even higher than like US Mercari and eBay prices. Let's talk about payment because that's like really my big complaint about Poker Market. Like I like most things about it, but the payment is a lot. So instead of just like paying directly from your card to the website, you have to put money in a virtual wallet. Sort of like the best way I could explain it is that if you're used to mobile ordering for Starbucks, where like you put money onto a card and then pay for your drink, um, it's like that where like basically no matter what you do, there's going to be a little bit of money left over in the wallet that you can't really spend, but has to be put away anyway. And there's no way to like return money from the wallet back to you. So like once you put money in the wallet, that's it. Um, like for example, right now I have a dollar forty left in the wallet that like if you have less than a dollar fifty in the wallet, you can't even do anything with it because even a fifty cent card is going to have a processing fee. But now that we're talking about payment, let's get into the processing fees. So basically there's three kinds. For when you're reloading your wallet, there's a processing fee. When you are buying a card, there's a processing fee. And when you're paying for shipping, there's a processing fee. Um, for buying a card, it's 30% of the card's cost um, with a minimum of it being a dollar. So if the card is, uh, let's say 50 cents, then the processing fee is going to be a dollar. So even the cheapest cards are a dollar fifty, just for like the base price. Um, but like if the card is a hundred dollars, then there'd be a thirty dollar processing fee, and so on and so forth. Ten percent processing fee for like adding. So I usually added in chunks of thirty. So I had a three dollar processing fee on every time I put more money into the wallet. Um. And then for shipping, um, I didn't check out any other, I should have, probably should have, before I made this video, check it out, like, what the other countries are. So for flat rate shipping to the U.S. is $30, and for a processing fee on shipping, that was $9.90. Um, those, I, those are like the big main three processing fees. So there's just like a lot of little things that add on to the price. Easy to like lose track of how much you actually spent when you like have all these hidden little fees added in last minute before you try to do anything. Shipping was pretty simple. Um, I just like waited until I had like 20 cards that I wanted and then I put it all together and paid for it. Um, it did take a while, but I can't say if that's regular or not. Uh, because I compiled all of them and sent out the shipping fee on the 10th. I got a notification on the 16th that it was finally shipped to me, and then I got, and then it got to me on the 24th. Uh, if you look at those dates, you notice that Lunar New Year happens, like, right in the middle of that. So I'm sure that definitely did not help. Um, they try to, they say that, like, they want to send it out like no more than five days and like mine was definitely on the tail end of five days um so there was probably a lot of contributing factors with it being lunar new year uh but it definitely it takes a while it takes a hot second to get to you uh, so i accidentally bought as you can see i accidentally bought this card twice and i wanted to compare the backs of it um just to like verify that these are all like legit cards. Um, actually, that's another thing I don't like is that they have barcodes on the back, so I can't like really use these sleeves, and I have to like use my own sleeves. Kind of wish that was not the case. Hi, editor man here. So I was going through and checking out all of the uh, barcodes and everything on the back of the photo card sleeves that it came with, I found that actually some were removable and I can reuse those and some weren't. Um, it looks like they have a wide variety of sleeves that they use. Um, I found that the thinner ones, it was way harder to remove the barcodes and if they did, they left like a uh, residue behind that I didn't think looked good. But on the thicker ones that they used, I found that it was actually very easy to remove the barcode just like any other sticker. and 
uh, continue to reuse that sleeve. So it really just kind of depends on what sleeve it comes in. Um, but like, yeah, anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Um, so as you can see, they are the exact same color, which bodes well for them not being fake. Um, here, let me get out. So it's not the exact same card, but it's the same back. So those have the same color back, the same font, everything looks the same here. The lighting is the same, so it's pretty safe to say that these are like Ab absolutely like legit cards but overall would i use poke market again yeah yeah i would um as a vernon and sunquan collector i found a lot of cards for a really good price um like especially like these twice pops up here were really good price um the older membership cards were really good price and the fact that i could find ruby and um spider cards at all for like again really good prices. I was like super impressed with that. Um, a lot of these cards I found for like way cheaper than what I would find even on Mercari Japan. Um, for Hiei, I would not, probably would not get from them again just because I know for a fact I can get them way cheaper on Mercari Japan and they have like a way better selection. Um, would I recommend this to other people? It really depends depends on who you're collecting because if member sh like pricing works against you i would not recommend poker market um if you live in a country where like the shipping is more than basically what i paid for shipping was like basically 40 dollars um i wouldn't really recommend it um it just it really depends on who you're collecting and how much you're willing to pay per card so for example here i didn't buy any card that was over four dollars um just because like i knew there was going to be a bunch of added fees so i didn't want to pay that much um and i did the math and like with all of the transaction fees and including the leftover a little bit in my wallet i paid about four dollars and fifty cents per card which is absolutely reasonable to me so yeah, I really, I, I would recommend checking it out. I would recommend doing some math for yourself and figuring out what you want. Um, and if it's like something that you want to try out, but you don't want to like commit to like buying 20 cards, but you also don't want to pay that much for shipping for only like getting a few cards. I know several people do group orders for Poke Market. Um, you might be able to save a few bucks that way. Um, I am a greedy little collector, so I'm probably not going to be joining any of those. Um, but yeah, don't be surprised when Poke Market starts showing up a little bit more in my videos, because this is definitely a resource I am going to be using a whole lot of. Yeah, that will be the end of my video. If you've made it this far, uh, I think you should like and subscribe and maybe even leave a comment, because clearly... We vibe a little bit, and I, you know, yeah. <laughs> this is so awkward. Anyways, um, that'll be it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me.